Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Citicom video. NVIDIA have admitted to, and I quote, incorrect specifications when it comes to the GTX 970. So let's give you a bit of context. For some time now, last week or so, users have been reporting some strange goings on with the GTX 970 with games which are using over 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM. In other words, the performance just drops quite substantially and it didn't really make sense. So if you think about it, this is going to happen for games which are primarily over 1440p and obviously if you're running say SLI GTX 970s, which in theory would be a good price performance ratio, you would expect, you know, a pretty good performance mix, but what users have noticed is when they're basically using GPU-Z or some other application to monitor the VRAM usage, they'll notice a rather large uh, drop in performance just when it goes over 3.5 gigs, which shouldn't really happen since the GPU has 4. So, people are like, well, what's going on? And it now would appear that the specifications that were both given to reviewers and have been banded about the internet by NVIDIA is actually false. So, the senior VP of GPU engineering, hopefully I'm going to pronounce his name correctly, Jonah Alban, um, has been speaking about this issue. And he noted that despite the initial reviews and information um, that were given by NVIDIA, the GTX 970 actually has fewer ROPs and less level 2 cache than the GTX 980, which was actually quite a big selling point for quite a few people because they associated the fact that really the two cards were quite similar apart from, you know, number of CUDA cores. But they are citing that the reason that this happened, the reason this um, mix-up happened was because the, there was an error in the reviewer's guide and a misunderstanding between the both engineering team, in other words, the people who are actually designing the GPU, and the technical public relations team, in other words, the people who are responsible for actually taking what the engineers create and then writing the reviewer's guides and other technical documents and then communicating with reviewers. But um, this mix-up, as a video would like to, I'm sure you to call it, um, is based on, well, they're not quite sure how the architecture itself functioned. So, essentially, the GTX 970 has 56 ROPs and 1792 KB of level 2 cache, compared to 64 ROPs and 2048 KB, also known, of course, as 2 megabytes of level 2 cache, which is what was advertised and also what's available on the GTX 980. So, what does that really mean? Well, it's a problem, because what we're finding here is that the GTX 970's memory pool is actually divided into two. This is in order to accommodate the fact that you've got fewer ROPs. So you've got one set which is 3.5 gigabytes and one which is the remainder, in other words the 0.5 gigabytes. And so the 0 0.5, the 512 megabytes, is actually slower to access than the 3.5 gigabytes, but it's still much faster than accessing, let's say, via the PCIe bus, in other words swapping to system memory and then eventually going to DDR3. The problem is, however, that it's already caused users to start change.org petitions. And they're actually calling for refunds because, well, of incorrect specifications. And in fact, the change.org petition reads, um, and I quote, he says, as he tries to find it, ah, there we go, in his million tabs, uh, also mentioned the review guide, the GTX 970 was supposed to operate with 64 ROPs and 2 megabytes of cache, with actual specs are revealed to only be 52 and 1.78 megabytes level 2 cache. Um, and then it's actually mistaken cu customers were misled with factual specs listed on incorrect specs listed on the packaging. And when using GPU Z, the specs actually reflect that it's error which still incorrectly reads the cards as having 64 drops, in other words, a cover-up, that's what they're stating, and it is believed that NVIDIA should offer its customers a refund and a very at least acknowledging compensation, perhaps in the form of a step-up program, so that customers can choose what's best for them. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't review the GTX 970, um, and I got kind of like a passing interest in the card, but... 
I did find it a little odd with the number of ROPs, simply because of how the structure worked. But obviously, I wasn't reviewing it, so I didn't really bother to look into it super amounts, to be totally honest with you. The problem is, however, that you've got a rather large problem. You've got a rather large deficit in performance. It's not like it was 20 megahertz of you know, clock speed difference. Let's say, for example, it was advertised to run at 1,050 megahertz, just for example, and in reality it runs at 1,030. You know, maybe someone can get away with a typo. This is quite a big deal, particularly when you consider that the 512 megabytes in question here runs at one-eighth of the speed of the rest of the memory, which is obviously nowhere near as ideal as what you would expect. So, what what's going to happen here? Well, it's a bit difficult to know. NVIDIA have started to put, you know, people in place and they start to talk to reviewer sites and try to rectify this, but it kind of shakes some confidence. And this is what I've been saying for some time um, when I think it just requires honest and open answers. And this just doesn't go for NVIDIA. This goes for AMD. This goes for... Uh, Microsoft, this goes for Sony, this goes for game developers, this goes down to people who are writing any application or selling any product, even if it's a bloody blender. Just be totally honest, because then you cannot get in issues like this. Microsoft had these problems with Windows 98 and Windows um, ME and so on, particularly with security problems, and we all know the botched issues of Windows ME. And it's it, it just a bit of a problem, to be totally honest with you. It's better just to be open and honest with your customers. And let's face it, Ubisoft last year was pretty much the epitome of PR disasters. We all know the PR disasters that Ubisoft faced. And now they're not only getting blasted on forums regularly, they're getting blasted by all the media outfits, all the YouTube celebrities, everyone are now sceptical. Now, admittedly, Ubisoft, I, I'm not trying to say that you know they're the same thing because Ubisoft did it quite systematically for a couple of years. Well, this is only an isolated incident, at least with the 900 series, but people remember this stuff and it's not particularly good. Um, so yeah, just kind of letting you all know. I've also heard some problems with this card, well, the 900 series as a whole, with coil, uh, coil wine, if I can pronounce the word, coil wine. In fact, I've had a couple of people ask me, is it normal? Well, from what I'm hearing, some people suffer from it, some people don't. Although, the 900 series does seem to be more likely to suffer from it than other cards. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, some people it really bothers, some people it's really noticeable, some cards don't really have it at all. It kind of just depends on luck of the draw, and I imagine it's something as well to do with the power supply. I'm not saying that the person has a bad power supply, but just based on the different setups of these systems, some people, uh, I've actually had it myself where I had one GPU um, and never had coil wine in my system at all. Put it to another friend's system, immediately had coil wine. I thought maybe it was his PSU that couldn't run it. I put in my PSU just as a test to make sure that, you know, he wasn't getting bad rails or bad voltages or any of that crap. Nope. Still had coil wine. So it was just something, obviously, that was interfering or causing a bit of feedback or whatever the hell the reason was, I, to be honest with you. As soon as I was like, yeah, your PSU is fine. I'm sure it's fine, basically. But anyway, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you've got a GTX 970... I would be probably paying close attention to see what's going to be happening over the next couple of months and hopefully NVIDIA are going to do something about this. I'd like some type of step up program, maybe some free games at the very least give some kind of compensation and hopefully, hopefully they'll learn from this. And this is, to be totally honest, another thing that pissed me off about NVIDIA quite recently and I am an NVIDIA user at the moment, I've got a GTX 980, uh, sorry 780 Ti and previously I was running a GTX 680 and before that I was running a GTX 480 so I'm kind of a long time in NVIDIA user, although I do use AMD as well in a different rig but another thing that kind of pissed me off with uh, NVIDIA recently as well, as you probably are going to know, is the GTX uh, 960 where they're saying that the effective RAM speed is 9.3 gigahertz because of you know efficiencies and I think that's also kind of misleading customers and I don't really agree with that either anyway 
Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.